vids or an idea back in another video today. Today, this is my second NRL review for today. I've already done the Gold Coast Times and now I'm up to my Manly Sea Eagles 2020 review, my team. Um, and yeah, so it's currently um, 11.30 right now at night. Um, this video may, may come out the next day, may come out at like 12. So um, this might come out in November. November November 1st, it's, it's October 31st right now, but it might come out at 12, which is midnight, and it's the next day by then, so it'll be November 1st, which when I upload this vid, probably. Uh, but yeah, welcome back to another review. Um, yeah, so I've got a lot of things to talk about, about me in 2020. Um, yeah, and I think that um, I just want to get my points out there, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So um, let's get into it. So mainly in 2020, it, it goes like this, basically. They... They have a very positive start to the year. They in round one, even though we lost this match, we uh, we lost eighteen and four, but we were very gutsy and our defense strength during the whole game. I recall was very very strong and solid. I thought our forwards played great that day. I thought that you know uh, everyone did their job. Um, uh, but the thing the thing is the. The, and the thing is, the Storm only got their tries off kicks, off, off kicks basically. That's a, that's only that's the only reason why Storm scored, and, and it's kind of unfortunate that those two kicks from Jerome Hughes went George Tafua's way, and um, yeah, like those two tries wouldn't have happened if George Tafua did not come off his wing. Because the thing is, when Jerome Hughes kicked the ball, George Tafua was like all the way down, like all the way off his wing. I don't know why Tafua was off his wing before, but like. To feel it, Jerome Hughes kicked it behind his head, behind his head, and Wunavala gets and scores two tries just like that, and um, yeah, basically that's the uh, the game there, and yeah, to feel didn't really do that much except for that, that big hit of Marion Seve that game, but look, you know, to feel was yeah, I kind of to feel kind of cost us in that game a little bit, but um, yeah, even though we lost, there was a lot of positives. Yeah, defense was good, and we showed that we are definitely contending for something special in twenty twenty. But then after that loss, which wasn't you know, wasn't a bad loss, but it was something we can definitely learn from it. Uh, but then round two, we play the Roosters, and we we, we win nine eight. And this game was originally at Central Coast Stadium, but um, uh, but the, the so for some reason the Roosters wanted to change it to um Leichhardt Oval, but um, made no difference because we still got the win nine points to eight. DC field goal, your beauty, DC. Um, and yeah, like I thought that after that win and the, the and the performance that Tom Turbo had. And just the way the team was going, I, I thought we were going to see something very, very special for me in 2020. I had a big feeling about them. I said, I was just thinking that we're going to see something, just something that's going to happen very special um, in 2020. And, yep, and unfortunately it wasn't to be. It just wasn't to be. It turned out to be a very, very rotten and very, um, very bad year for me. And there's been a lot, a lot of things happening there this year. Unfortunately, we've kind of, back, we've kind of gone back to the 2018 days a little bit there, which is kind of sickening to say, but it's the truth. You can't really uh, hide away from that. Um, but then the thing is, um, when we had that good win against the Roosters, uh, COVID hit and we were in lockdown. Then we, when we came back from the lockdown and, and when the comp came back, the, the new revamped comp, you played the Bulldogs at Central Coast Stadium. We won the game 32-6. That was a pretty uh, solid win. It wasn't the greatest win, but it was a very, very solid win, I thought. Um, but... I think we all know that this was a turning point of our season. This was a turning point. This this was a the thing is, this was our best win all year. And then this was like the this was our best win all year, but then there was plenty of bad things that happened in it as well. So obviously in round seven we played the Raiders, we won forty points to fourteen points to six. We lost three players during that game and we still get the win over the um runner the runners up in twenty nineteen against last year's runners up. And we still get the win with losing three players, mainly. So, um, yeah, it's good. That was a fantastic win. That was, and Gus Gould said that was probably one of the best, the best Manly games that he's seen because usually um, Manly known for having their backs against the wall. And, um, yeah, they still win against the Raiders, cause Raiders over Campbell Town and Oval because I remember that week in round seven, um, everyone was tipping Raiders, not Manly. And, um, yeah, Manly had their, you know, had their backs to the wall. And, of course, typical Manly. Just, um, they do it, and they just, um, love being, um, doubted, proven wrong, and, yeah, they, the one that got won the game, but then, there are a lot of negatives out of it, too, losing Tom Turbo f for, you know, basically the year, even though he returned for one game against the Titans late, late, in, late this year, but he hurt his shoulder, unfortunately, can't catch a break, can't catch a, um, a break of that bloke, and, um, we yeah, lost Dylan Walker to an ankle injury, and that kind of sidelined him for the year as well. And then we lost Brad Parker, who kind of, who did it to himself. He 
slipped over when he ran the ball, hit his head, and um, yeah, for don't know how you can do that, but um, yeah, he slipped over, hit his head in the floor, and it was just an accident, I thought, and yeah, like it was just unlucky that, but um, I think you, you can kind of tell losing Tom Travoyevich into the Walker, with, uh, they're two very key parts of Manly, and um, they give us a lot of options and attack and all that, and. Losing them obviously really crucified our season, you know, just their um their players really lead the team up front, they're very uh, important and just losing them they're, they're, and they're key men for Manly as well and um and yeah, it's just disappointing to lose those two players in the in our um best win all year and best game probably go, and that we've seen from Manly in a long time. Um and I just think that yeah, like yet again, our year was it was uh, full of injuries. Uh, we got this injury curse. Now I'm just thinking that maybe me have a look into the um, strength strength and conditioning department. Our doctors are gonna look at maybe all that because that it's been this they, this injury curse has been happening for too long. And I got I think that mainly just have to they have to really look at the um doctors all there and um kind of um review it all because. Since twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen, we've had these very bad injuries, and I don't know what's, yeah, I don't know what's been happening, but um, yeah, we've got to change something there with the doctors and all that. For I, th I think because it's been going on for too long, it's unbelievable our injury list each and every single year. Um, but I thought guys like Moses, uh, Moses Sully for uh, Adam Fidel Blake, uh, Curtis Sirin, Daly Cherry Evans, um, um. And who else? I thought that, and I thought Jake tried again. Jake and Weaver just tried every time. All the all these players I just said right now, they they were great again this se this season. But unfortunately, some players went back, like Ruben Garrick went backwards. Unfortunately, but I'm prepared to give Ruben Garrick another chance. I, I believe he's a good young kid who's a big future in front of him, and I believe he deserves another chance in 2021. Ruben Garrick. So, ho hopefully, he can um just just improve in 2021. I guess um. But I'm thinking the reason why Ruben Garrick's form went downhill is because he wasn't getting enough quality ball on his side of the field. Because Tom Drawage obviously gets the ball everywhere. He's um, a real link to our team. And Manasi Fainu, we're obviously missing him a lot. I know Danny Levi was solid, but I don't think Danny Levi really fit in with the Manly team. He just didn't gel. I think the way Danny Levi plays, the way Manly combined and play as a team just didn't suit Levi's ga um, game style. And it's not his fault, just how it is. And uh, yeah, good luck to Danny Levi wherever he goes. Just didn't gel with the team and the way they played and all that. But and Fine obviously does gel with our Manly team. And yeah, obviously he's a big loss. He losing Tom, losing Tom Travoyevich, Manasi Fine, Dylan Walker, all those sort of players. They're they're all key to Manly. They they are key players basically. We lose all them, and yeah, we look like a very um. We just look like a um. Brisbane Broncos 2.0, basically, you know, just without these plays. Um, and, that, yeah, it's kind of bad, you know, f especially this year, comparing me to Broncos uh, in that sense. But, hey, it's true. Unfortunately, it is true. That's how he did play a part of the season, like the Broncos, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but, look, I, I just I just think that... Um, that um, signing Kieran Form, which is great, a favourite son returns home. I was very happy about that, seeing Foz return home and getting Andrew Davey, who, you know, did very well with Paramount Eagles at the back end of the year and is a solid back rower. Um, but I feel like we need a lot more than those two. I think that we need, uh, hopefully, Jason Saab comes to Manly. That's apparently very close to happening, Jason Saab. Um, Luke Garner was talking about being the Joel Thompson replacement in the back row, but I'm not sure where those, where those are. <coughs> Talk has gone now. Um, apparently, it's kind of gone a little bit cold. Uh, and I think the Dragons wanted some compensation for Jason Sub. They release him. So, and Albert Hopperwadi is already off contract for me. And he has not got a new deal yet. So, I'm thinking that maybe Albert Hopperwadi could be traded places with Jason Sub at the Dragons. So, Sub to Manly and Albert Hopperwadi the Dragons, possibly. That could be an option right there as a compensation, compens compensation for the Dragons there, trading those two players. But... Um, yeah, Manly needs some change. I think that guys, I think how the game is right now, how it's fast, I think guys like George Tafua, Brad Parker, uh, have been very exposed to it. And you look at other, like, you look at other teams, like Rabbitohs, Storm, Roosters, they all have fast, and Panthers, they all, they all have fast quality backs. And I don't think guys like George Tafua, Brad Parker, like, they're just not fast enough for the new game right now. And, um, 
yeah, they've been exposed pretty badly under the new rules, I think. Um, and I think that guys like Tavita Funa, Morgan Harper, they've been positive to our season. And I think, you know, one of them at least deserves a spot in our team because they've they deserve it. They've shown their proven their quality, and I think that they def one of those guys should definitely come into our team because they've um, definitely won a swap. That's for sure over Tafua and Parker. Um, but look, yeah, it's, it's been a very it's a year, it's been a year to forget for me, and I think that there's been attitude problems there. It's just been there's just had this is had nothing been going our way this year. But I think there's been injuries, there's been off field drama with Fino and all that for Newell Blake, obviously, which just made a manly look bad. Um. Yeah, it's been a very horrid year for Manly, and I'm hoping that the that the footy gods are a bit nicer to us in 2021. That's like, well, that's what I hope so, hope for, and all Manly fans. But um, yeah, I'm against my star player. So my star player goes to Daly Cherry, and it's, it's no brainer because this guy cops a lot of shit for no reason. Um, I think people are just jealous on the contract contract he's on, and yeah, I think that you know DC is laughing all the way to the bank because I don't know people are just jealous of how. The contract he has, and he thinks, and people think that he doesn't deserve it. But you tell me this, you tell me this. He's a great leader. He's yeah, you know, he's a great leader, great family man. DC. Um, he's just he's just a role model, and I look up to him honestly. DC. He's just a great talker, great great bloke. I met him plenty of times as well. He's just so good to talk to. Um, DC. Um, and uh, yep, he's a Queensland captain. He's. The current Australian halfback, but Nathan Cleary, just based on this year's form, I think Nathan Cleary could get the halfback for Australia, but it doesn't matter because uh, at least Cherry Evans is the captain for Manly in, Queen, in the Queensland Maroons. Um, and look, he's just a quality player, Cherry Evans. He's won a premiership. Clive Churchill made it was in a losing side. Um, he's just a great player, DC, and I don't care what people say about him, what you know, or how negative people are about him because. DC is a great player. He's class. He doesn't care what people say about him. He's, he's good. He's good. He doesn't look into the media and all that. Um, yeah, he's just all class. DC. You know, honestly, I think people are just jealous of him. Just jealous of him, honestly. Um, but look, yeah, it's no brain at me. He gets um, our star player of the year. He always tries. He's just in everything. He's in tackle. He tackles all the time. He's just like Jake. You know, always in the tackles. Um, always setting up plays. He got. I think came. I think he came third for the most tries this this year. Um, and yeah, he's just such a, such a leader as well, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a very smart play. And I think that with Kieran Foran coming to the club, I hope that Kieran Foran and Daly Cherry Evans are the halves partners for twenty twenty one because I think Kieran Foran will take a lot of pressure off Daly Cherry Evans because I think Cherry Evans has done way too much this year, and but and he's been good for us, Cherry Evans. But you just, I think he needs a little bit of pressure taking off him because I don't think he can do it all himself. I, I don't think. And uh, a Foz will take a, a Kira Foran really help him I think because someone like Foran will um definitely um yeah make DC go back to his natural game and just doing what's best and instead of doing too much and uh, I hope Foran and DC are the are the halves combination in twenty twenty so but if it's Josh Schuster I don't mind because Schuster's a good young kid and we need to give young youngsters like that a go in first grade but I'm hoping it's Foran and DC as a half part of twenty twenty one that's that's my preference right there but um. Yeah, DC has just been every, in everything. He's in a tough year as the captain. He's done so well and, um, yeah, definitely deserves my recognition, actually. He deserves it. DC is my star player of the year. Uh, just a great player, honestly, DC. He's a legend. So, um, well done in a great year, DC, in a tough year, in a tough year, tough year for the Sea Eagles. Uh, and my uh, worst player of the year award, unfortunately, it goes to Georgie, George Tafua. Um, yeah, he's been he's been very exposed badly this year, George. He's... This is probably his worst year yet. Um, I think every time now, um, yeah, every time now that um, um, that mainly playing an opposition club and George Tafu is on it playing on the wing, I think that's the number one target. That's where every opposition club's going to target George Tafu's left side wing, and they're going to put kicks. They're going to target him with kicks. They're going to target him with with uh, cross field kicks. They're going to target him with. You know, Harbour Bridge passes, they're just going to target him more across the park, I reckon, uh, Paul George. But, you know, I honestly think George Tafua's body's breaking down. He just doesn't have it anymore. It's not his fault. It just happens. Uh, he's been a good player, a good server, a good clubman for us over the years, George Tafua. But I think it's time for some youngsters to kind of uh, step in those uh, winger, centre roles, etc., whatever roles now. And, um, you know, I think George Tafua's passed it. But he's been a great clubman. And, it's, yeah, it's a very good for our young Islander guys because I think George Tafua is someone that, all these young islanders look up to because he's a, 
you know, all of all of these days they get into trouble, unfortunately, and that's just how it, that's how it is with some of those cultures. And um, yeah, someone like George Sefield is a really good leader for those young uh, Islander guys. So um, that's what that's why I think that's why George Sefield is very likable as a player and uh, a person off field. But yeah, I think his time is done for his career. And I think honestly think that Tavita Funa deserves a go. Even Abbas Miski, you never know. That's a bit of competition in the preseason. Uh, I think Ruben Garrick's ready to reborn himself, but um. Yeah, look, I think to to feel his uh had his day and yeah, twenty twenty's been his worst year yet. He just cannot defend anymore. He just looks lazy, too slow, too slow. Um, and how the game is, how it's fast, and how the game is in it right now, and it's faster. It's really, it's really got to George and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, George George done George to feel done. Unfortunately, he's just he's had his time, but um, yeah, it's time to move on. I think. And my surprise packet play of the year award, it's a no-brainer. It goes to the legend himself, Tangelo Paseca. I've been a big fan of this guy ever since. I'm so glad that Tangelo Paseca already signed for four years. I've always seen this potential of Paseca. I know some people say that he's nothing more than a backup forward, but I didn't think so. I thought that Paseca was always this guy who has potential. He's, you know, very big, uh, very strong. Got some great footwork for a forward, a bit like Takayahu, who has a bit of footwork for a forward, and that's what Paseca's like as well. And, um, yeah, he's got a bit of agility as well. And he's got a bit of, and I think 2020 has been a very successful year per second. We've seen him evolve quite a bit. And I think that he's the perfect um, Adam Fanula Black replacement next year in the props, uh, I think. New front row next year, Fanula, um, per second, replacing Fanula Black. I think that's a good replacement right there. Don't need to go on the market and sign anybody. We could sign maybe a depth forward, but that's about it. Because I think per second is our... Um, Number one replacement next year for um, Adam Fanula Blake at prop. I mean, Kepi's there, but I think Paseca deserves his spot in the starting um, starting uh, team. So, uh, Paseca's had a very big year. I've seen potential in him. Uh, I think he finally realizes how big he is, and he's just showing what um, he's just showing what we all think he can do. Like he's just a beast. He's just so hard to stop. And yeah, he's a great young player with a big future. And he's he's a big part of Manly. I'm glad we've re-signed for another four years until the end of 2024. I'll be 18 by then, so that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, look, it's good to see that he's um, uh, at the club for a long for a uh, long time now. And um, I'm so glad to see Paseca really um grow. And I think 2021 is going to be a year where we're going to see a lot a lot of um great things from Paseca. He's going to have a big year, I reckon that big Tangula. Uh, but look, my crystal ball for Manly in 2021 is that they're going to not make the top eight, unfortunately. They're going to come about 12th or 13th. And my beloved Seagulls, I hope they make the top eight. I hope there's a change, but I don't see it, unfortunately. I think that's going to be it's gonna be one of those years again for Manly, but I hope not. But let's see. Let's just hope that 2021 is a positive year, eh? Let's just, let's just see how we go. I'm just, I just hope 2021 is a better year for Manly. Um, and I, I think all Manly fans are hoping that we can see us return to the finals footy and just see us... Um, just be just be contenders again, I guess. With um, with the team we have, because we have some great players, we just need to keep them on the park. That's all. The footy guys need to be nicer to us, I think, in twenty twenty one. But let's see how we go. So um, guys, I hope you enjoyed my Manly Seagulls 2020, 2020 review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and um, I'll see you tomorrow for my Melbourne Storm news and the Warriors, and possibly my Newcastle Knights review tomorrow. So it might be three reviews tomorrow. So guys, see you then. Peace.